welcome from the Auto AI USA 2018 in San Francisco. I'm here with Professor Luke Van Gogh from Toyota. Hi, Luke, and welcome to the conference. First of all, I would like to ask you to briefly introduce yourself and your professional background. I'm at the University of Leuven in Belgium and ETH in Switzerland, which is in fact also a university, but a technical university there. And uh, where Toyota comes in is that at both places we have a collaboration with Toyota in the form of a joint research uh, framework um, where we focus on computer vision for autonomous cars. Tomorrow you will be holding a keynote presentation in the evening about autonomous driving and perception. Can you give me a few more insights into what you will talk about? There are so many different aspects to uh, computer vision or any sensing needed for autonomous driving that you have to start asking questions about how would you possibly combine all those. Uh, so the first part of the talk will have an emphasis on how to combine different subtasks uh, and that will take the form of multitask networks. And uh, after that, I will actually exemplify a few of the specific subtasks themselves and tell a bit more about what we have been doing in order to uh, increase performance. Can you share with me some more uh, state-of-the-art examples of uh, computer vision for autom automated driving? The level of performance that is required is extremely high. So uh, that is why we also are, for instance, training on difficult weather conditions and have looked into that. Another aspect is the combination of language and uh, images. So where in fact a conversation between a user and the car is actually grounded in the visual environment that they share. So I think all these things are novel developments in computer vision that have a direct impact also on, of course, uh, autonomous cars in particular. What are the potential lessons that can be learned from other areas, such as biology, for example? Probably there are quite a few. Uh, so neural networks have their name uh, coming from the fact that there are some similarities with the brain, but not all things are similar. Uh, so there are quite a few substantial differences as well. Uh, also at the initial talks during this conference it has been emphasized for instance that deeper networks seem to behave better uh, but uh, well the brain would not hit me as a very deep network because uh, that depth would also come with some delays and so on so the brain is doing a lot with a kind of a six layer basic architecture and I don't think we have quite cracked the essence of that architecture uh, moreover, there is a lot of feedback in the brain. Uh, there's not so much feedback going on in our current neural networks, which are still pretty much feed forward. So probably quite a bit of the depth can go away if you would have a little bit more feedback going on within tasks and between tasks. A second thing that I would uh, like to mention comparing to biology is that, of course, in the animal kingdom, we have many types of uh, eyes. Here we think always about cameras that come very close to human perception, certainly in terms of spectral uh, composition uh, and also horizontal versus vertical uh, aspect ratio. But probably it would be interesting to, in fact, from scratch almost like learn what the optimal sensors for an autonomous car ought to be. What do you foresee as the future directions for computer vision? Just 10 years ago, nobody would have uh, seen coming deep learning, uh, which is, uh, in fact, also due to the confluence of the fact that now the millions of parameters can be learned. Uh, there was the kind of... Uh, yeah, appropriate hardware that's right time available. Uh, so future for computer vision, difficult to see, but I think one of the major trends certainly is that what has been uh, silos in terms of uh, analysis are now coming together. So people would have in the past been studying object recognition or tracking or depth perception. Now all these things all of a sudden start to also come together into single systems because for uh, applications like autonomous driving you need simply all of them and at their best. What are your first impressions of the conference so far? Well, extremely interesting, uh, I have to say, and of course it's always very exciting to hear what is the newest that is going on in the different labs. Uh, of course, everybody's a bit struggling with the same kind of uh, problems and limitations. 
so it's always interesting to see what people have to say about that, what the way forward may be. Well, thank you very much for your time and for your insights and have a great rest of the day. My pleasure.